Okay, here we're just doing a quick air check. Now, by the way, if I drop the clutch at all, this wouldn't apply smoothly and it would have a tendency to pop up. But as you can see, no problem. And here we have going through our new Torrington seals, no problem. The whistling sound you hear is my air gun leaking. There we go. So those Torrington seal rings there on the shaft, they provide a very positive seal. I don't even have any transmission fluid in it. No problem at all. Okay, here we're taking a look at the K3 drum and sun gear. Now, on the two sun gears, what happens is that I actually can lock them together with the K3 clutch and also with a sprag clutch. And so I have removed the snap ring so that I can carefully inspect the sprite clutch. It looks to be in excellent condition. I also have to replace these two O-rings. So, they come right off without any trouble. We'll wash it up in a little solvent, blow dry it, inspect it carefully. There, the sprag clutch looks to be in excellent condition. Now remember, if I actually remove a sprag and flip it upside down, it will change the direction that it locks. And Of course, that would be disastrous as putting together the transmission. Now here I'm using my bomb tool again, and this works very nicely. Here, I could have used my harbor press, but this is working nicely. I got my L-type snap ring here so just reach in and carefully pop it up and pick it up and what the tool allows me to do it allows me to do it on the bench without any problem now one thing I could do is I could just simply take this adapter over to the arbor press and just set this on the wood blocks and push on it. And that would have done the same thing. That's what I'll do in the future, obviously. But it's nice to try the new tool and see how it works. Okay, now I need to pop my piston out. And we're going to be replacing the o-ring. The inner o-ring is right here. Wash it carefully and then dry it. Okay here we see the output shaft and the output planetary. Uh, we've carefully washed it in solvent and blow dried it with air. Now I have five Torlon ceiling rings right here. I'm going to be replacing these are the old ones. They're actually in excellent condition But we have five new ones and so we'll go ahead and slip these on They're all the same size want to make sure that if you're taking these off that you certainly don't Leave one off as far as the orientation is concerned. I don't believe it makes any difference But uh, here we go So we'll go ahead and slide our Torlon ceiling rings, get them all started here. The idea is you just don't want to overstress them. They're very tough though and very resilient. They're, you know, much stronger and very easy to work with. It's just, you know, not really a problem. So here we go on the first groove, go ahead and drop it to the next. Now obviously that groove there is for a snap ring, which we'll see in just a moment. And they're sliding right on without any trouble. Okay, here we have a radial bearing right here. This actually is in excellent condition. The race looks very good, no problem. You know, coming down with number four.
I slip all the way down. And then the last one, number five. And of course, I'm inspecting the grooves on the shaft. They're all in excellent condition. Here we go. This Torrington bearing is captured. It's in excellent condition. All of my planetaries are spinning freely. No looseness. Very good. All right, now I'm going to have a Torrington bearing race that's going to go at this location and you don't want to forget that. And I'm going to just retain it with a little bit of the assembly lube. And this assembly lube, of course, is designed specifically for automatic transmission and, of course, dissolves very quickly in automatic transmission fluid. All righty. So... Here we have the internal gear, planet pinions. There's the Torrington bearing, it's captured nicely. It's in very good condition. Now you'll notice that I like to use these plastic PVC pipes and they certainly don't scratch or mar the aluminum or the steel. All right, now we're ready to move on. Here as I put the sun gears together, here's my new seals. So here I have my seals for the K3 clutch and sun gear. These two seals are the same size and they're actually going to go on this shaft. Now I see three grooves, but one of those grooves is actually for a snap ring. These are just conventional O-rings. Don't over stretch them there. here we go no problem okay here we have the Sprag clutch, and what happens there in a specific gear ratio this will lock the two sun gears together but then as I am actually transmitting force between the engine and the rear wheels the Sprag clutch will be locked and there as I let up the sprag clutch will overrun so I won't get that driveline shock and then as I shift into the next gear as the K3 clutch comes on then it would lock um, uh, the actually the K3 clutch would lock the sun gears together preventing the sprag from overrunning and since I'm mentioning that you'll notice that when I look at the K3 clutch the only time this clutch is going to be applied is in an overrun condition. So you can see that even after 100,000 miles, those clutches look like they're almost brand new. Now, I have a snap ring that's going to retain the two sun gears together. It's supported there on a roller bearing and the sprag clutch. Now, I've never seen this bearing fail, but this one certainly is in excellent condition. And again, as I put this together, I did not disassemble this sprag, but you want to be aware that if I flip the sprag assembly upside down, it will change its direction that it locks and freewheels. And obviously that would have a disastrous effect on my transmission. All right, here we're ready to uh, install our snap ring. Now you want to be careful because the snap ring has to go past those two o-rings that you just installed so be careful not to cut them or damage them in any way. And there it goes and I'll just use my bronze screwdriver to push the snap ring down into its groove. I think I'm going to need a little help with the snap ring pliers.
And there we go. Very nice. No problem. One thing I like about this screwdriver, as you say, why would anybody want a bronze screwdriver like this? It's not very strong. It's easy to break it. Yes, but it doesn't scratch steel and it's hesitant to mar aluminum. So it's very good for manipulation of snap rings there in an automatic transmission. What is this for? This is explosion proof. The idea is it doesn't create a spark when you're using it. That's the idea. All right, so this is good. Got our two O-rings there. We have a D-type sealing ring for the piston. A little bit of the assembly lube and we'll slide down into the housing. Okay, now here I've used my balm spring compression tool to compress that diaphragm spring and that appears to have worked very very nice and of course this is an L type snap ring now truthfully my Arbor Press does a very nice job but here I can actually do the operation on the bench without any trouble and sure enough that snap ring just slid right in there no problem whatsoever Yep, so I'd have to say this tool does indeed help. Now as far as the number of 7226s we do, you'd be surprised because this is found in Chrysler, Mercedes, and uh, even the Sprinter vans. They like to use this transmission behind both gasoline and diesel. So we see quite a few of them actually. All right, looks good. So we're gonna go ahead and load our clutch pack and then put this back together. Okay, here I have my K3 clutch together with its new seals. I have a little bit of the assembly lube there to help me slip past my two O-rings. And uh, I need to slide this together. So. And sometimes this can be just a little tricky. If it is, what I can do is I can actually lift, uh, take the clutch apart. But I don't think that's going to be necessary. Let's see if I can slide it down together. Yeah, there it goes. Once it usually gets started, it's okay. All right, now if you have trouble getting this to come down through the clutches, what you can do is just remove the backing plate and then they'll turn it upside down and it will just kind of allow the clutches to slip down along their splines without any problem. It goes right together, no problem. So here we go. And then we can put our backing plate right back on, looking at the witness mark to actually see how it was originally assembled. Okay, that indeed looks good. Now, okay, now here we're sliding the Torrington bearing race, the Torrington bearing, and then the upper race into position. I can look at the witness mark there to see what side the rollers were actually moving against. Here's the snap ring. And obviously you can get your favorite snap ring pliers. Now, a true arc snap, snap ring is tapered on one side, and this doesn't appear to be a true arc snap ring at all. And I can look at the witness mark to see kind of actually where it was. So we'll go ahead and carefully slide it down into position my favorite little bronze screwdriver and just push it down make sure it's in the groove without any trouble and it is all right we got our new ceiling rings and we're ready to go and also we can do a quick little air check right here and just give it a and yeah, it's very tight. I feel it 
come on no problem obviously you got to put your finger on the other side but I hear the clutch moving it's very good seal all right here we take the old seals put them in the original bag and we're ready to continue the assembly process okay here we're ready to lower the output planetary this is a very important Torrington bearing race. This is going to go down here against the input shaft. And sometimes what happens is it helps to kind of line the clutches up a little bit here before you try to lower this down. And I'll just go ahead and see if I can't do it without doing that. It's much easier to do, obviously, on the bench. So here we go. Boy, that didn't take long. Went together without any problem whatsoever. Okay, now we're ready to keep going. Okay, now what we're do doing is we're going to do the B2 piston. And actually, I have a piston within a piston. What's going to happen is the inner clutch back, the small piston, is going to be grabbing this inner race and locking it to the case. And then here the larger outer piston is going to lock this planetary member to the case. Now I've already disassembled it and removed the D-type and conventional O-rings and I'm getting ready to install my new kit. And real quick, I'll just put it together without the O-ring so I can see the orientation. One thing that's real important here is that the orientation of the large piston to the housing is very important. Now, actually, after you put it together, you can move it a little bit, but you don't want to have it in a 180 degree position. That's going to be very difficult. So it's a good idea to just simply use a paint pen to show the correct alignment. And here I have the small piston. And then I actually have a return piston. Now I do have a diaphragm style spring this is, an, this is a stationary clutch. It doesn't spin. But one of the things that I do have on the return piston is that I have a bleed orifice check valve. And that needs to be oriented towards the top of the case. Of course, what happens is that the retainer is going to kind of force you to put it in that position. There's a space for it to index correctly. So now what we'll do is let's go ahead and load our rubber O-ring and D-rings.